All right, so I just wanted to start off with uh, letting everyone know that uh, yesterday I was informed uh, by the team that they were going to have me back as the, uh, the general manager of the team. Uh, that happened yesterday, uh, early this morning. I actually met with Coach Dickinson and informed him that he wouldn't be back as our head coach uh, next season. Um, that happened this morning. Um, you know, and I want to uh, thank Coach Dickinson for all of his uh, hard work, dedication. Um, he really worked his butt off the last number of years, but he gave um, you know ten years of his of his career to the Rough Riders, and he's an honorable person and worked his butt off. And uh, you know, I just um, wanted to thank him for all of his hard work and, and dedication to the Rough Riders, and and also uh, just ask that everyone respects. Uh, the type of person that he is, um, because he certainly certainly showed it back. So I um, would appreciate everyone showing him respect. Um, he handled it uh, the same way that uh, that any of you would expect Coach Dickinson to to uh, handle himself as a person. He's just uh, just a gr just a great man, and and uh, wanted to wanted to thank him. Um, these are obviously not uh, easy decisions when, when you're dealing with people that are part of the organization for a long time. Um, so it was a challenging last uh, 48 hours and um, conversations that you don't really enjoy having um, with staff members that you're close with. Um, but ultimately, um, you know, I felt that it was the best decision to um, move our our team forward was to make the decision to to not bring Coach Dickinson back. Um, you know, our head our our search for the new head coach of the Rough Riders will will start immediately, um, and. Uh, you know, that process will happen over the next number of weeks. Um, I can't give you a, a definite time of when we'll have our head coach in place because we'll have to go through the process um, with uh, requesting permission to talk to um, staff members from other teams. Um, we'll also go through a, a thorough evaluation of, of all of our football operations department and the processes that we use uh, with our football team. Um, I think it's important to do that after every year. Um, just to make sure that we're we're doing things the right way to allow our team to be successful on the field. So we'll we'll continue to do that as we do uh, after all the years. Um, did want to send a a message to Rider Nation, and you know it's uh, it's difficult when the season ends uh, when it's when you're not uh, not in the playoffs and you haven't reached the goals that you set out. So um, just wanted to say to to uh, the fan base that we certainly appreciate the support that they show us. Um, we know that. We let you down uh, this season and last season, um, and uh, we need to be better, and, and we will be better. Um, we just ask for the continued support, uh, the same support that they've shown us for the longest longest time as I can remember. Um, we'll uh, work our butts off and make sure that we have a team uh, on the field that they can be proud of. So I just ask for them to continue uh, to show their support uh, moving forward. Um, and then before I open it up for questions, I just wanted to also just thank everyone that's reached out uh, the last 24 hours to show uh, support to uh, myself and the team. Uh, if I haven't gotten back to you yet, I, I promise I will, but um, certainly appreciate the messages uh, that you're sending. So I'll open it up. When did you realize that you had to make a coaching change? Um, well, you know, we were, as everyone knows, we were in a uh, we had an opportunity to make the playoffs all the way up until you know the last minute of the game there or the last couple seconds of the game so um, you know I think that at a certain point in the season and when we were starting to kind of go on a skate at the end of the year um, you start to think about it a little bit more because we're just not having success on the field and um, I don't ever want to be on a team where you're you know you're you're hoping to get in the playoffs or you're having a scrape and claw to get in the playoffs. You know, that's not the goal of, of any organization, certainly not this one, of, is to, um, you know, to hope that you can pull out a game at the, at the end to, to get you into the playoffs. So um, you start to think about it when you go through times like that and when your record gets to a certain point. Um, but, you know, our year, um, you know, the middle of the season, it looked like we had turned the corner for the positive when we played, you know, BC in the Labor Day game we were playing. Decent football, not great, but decent football. Um, and it looked like we were going to improve as the year went on. And when we looked at our schedule for the second half, it, it appeared that um, we certainly had an opportunity to make a run at it. And so as that goes on, it's, um, you know, it becomes a little bit more clear that, um, that we don't have the right mix. What is the status of the rest of the coaching staff? 
Yeah, so all the all the assistant coaches, uh, coordinators, uh, and the rest of the assistant coaches are all on one-year contracts. So their contracts will expire at the end of this end of this year. Um, so the new coach will have the ability to hire his entire coaching staff. What does that search look like for you? Um, well, obviously, um, it's something that I've given consideration. It's been it's it's fairly fresh, but um, you know I do think that there's excellent candidates out there to be the head coach of our team. Um, and, um, you know, I'll have a, an extensive list that I'll do some pre preliminary interviews with, and then I'll narrow that down, eventually get into a smaller group that, um, that will be more serious candidates, but, um, it will be a wide range of, of people that I reach out to, to start. Jeremy, how long is your extension? Um, I think Craig's up after me, so I think I'll let, I'll let him talk about, um, my contract. Just from your viewpoint, what, what went wrong again this year, seven game losing streak, second year in a row to end it? Well, there's a lot that goes wrong, and um, you know I think it's important um, to understand and on a football team, there's, there's, it's just not one thing. Um, it's not one person. Um, we all share responsibility in, in the outcome on the field, and um, I'm certainly not immune to it as as well. Um, but um, you know, I think when you're evaluating a football team, you evaluate the play of the team, and um, you know, there's a lot of a lot of things in there that we weren't really good at, you know, and I think one of the one of the big things was was the turnover battle. If you look at our turnover ratio, um, you know, we were we were the worst in the league at turnovers in there. It's a pretty critical statistic to any football game. Um, but when I when I evaluate it um, in a bigger picture, it's you know we we, we just didn't play complementary football every time. Um, one of the sides of the ball made a big play, we didn't we didn't follow it up, and, and when we needed a a stop or we needed so we needed to score we just didn't get it and, and you know it was very evident even in our last game where um you know we came out out the gates and and looked like it was going to be a, a blowout and um you know one one bad things happened and, and we just couldn't couldn't recover and it kind of snowballed so that was kind of the story that game was kind of a snapshot of our of our season in in general where um, when, a, when a bad thing happens, we just didn't respond, you know, and when things, when something bad happens, you have to be able to bounce back. And I just didn't feel like we, we did that many times. Are Not enough. Changes to the football operations staff at all, increase American scouting or changes in that regard? Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty happy with our scouting department. I think we've done uh, a decent job. We all, we obviously can improve, but I think we've done a, a good job of bringing young talent, um, both on the American side and the Canadian side, and I, I have a lot of confidence in, in the guys that we have that are that are scouting our players. And um, you know, I think it's something that I constantly monitor and make sure that we're doing a good job. And it's part of the evaluation process at the end of the year. But I, I feel confident with the guys we have in that department. Jeremy, you have the same same group of guys uh, relatively your court from last year and this year. How much of the roster do you anticipate turning over? How many new players do you need to bring in? Do you need to start fresh? What, what do you think? Um, I, I, I don't think this, that we're looking at a situation where we re need to rebuild our team. I really feel like we've got a good foundation of young players. Um, you know, but we, we, we definitely have work to do. I mean, we, we finished 6 and 12. Um, and that's the reality of it, is, is we just weren't good enough. And so. Um, but I don't feel like this is a complete uh, rebuild. We need to start over with our roster. I think we've got very good young Canadian talent that's on the rise. And I think, um, you know, if anything came out of the season, we, we've, we developed some guys into very good players. And, um, you know, I think some of the situations, some of the guys we brought in in the offseason were injured, which was disappointing, um, you know, at the quarterback position. Um, you know, losing Philip Blake early was, was difficult to uh, – to overcome, we were we were hoping, and and uh, you know we had to do a little bit of a, a musical chairs with our offensive line for the first half of the half of the year, which uh, we were just kind of snake bitten at at the tackle position with going through I think four or five different starters, and then finally when we got settled in, we improved. But um, I think we um, will have some rostered changes, but I, I don't think it's going to be wholesale changes. Um, but we'll we'll evaluate everything. I think. One of the things we have to understand is when you hire a new coach, they have different philosophies, they have different coordinators, and players are going to fit differently into the roster. Um, you know, players that the the last coaching staff liked and, and different characteristics of players may be different with the new coach. Um, and so um, we'll have to evaluate that as we go along.
from your perspective, what's what was the reason the team couldn't win on the road? Like, East of Mosaic last two seasons, it was hard on road trips. Some games you got blown out. What, what? Looking at it from your perspective, what was the difference there? What happened? You know, I I wish I had the uh, the, the 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 perfect answer to why we we didn't play well on the road, but I, I really don't. You know, so and I think um, what we'll do is you know part of this process when you talk to a lot of different candidates for the head coaching job is, is really just to, to talk them talk to them about how they do things and if they're doing it differently. Um, you know, we we travel first class and we, you know, our, our players are accountable on the road and, um, you know, some of the environments that we're playing in um, are, are not, um, not environments where the crowd noise is a huge factor. I mean, our, our fans travel so well on the road, we, we don't have excuses to not play well on the road. Um, you know, if you're going to certain stadiums and you look up and there's so much green and white, then the crowd noise isn't, isn't, a, isn't a factor. But, um, you know, we'll look at everything we can to see why why we didn't perform uh, well on the road. And, and we also need to be better at home. You know, we need to win in front of our fans and, and uh, that's important. Are you also going to address why it seems like we have so many injuries? Because it seems like this isn't the first year we've had a lot of injuries. And I'm wondering if it's a conditioning thing or uh, if you're going to take a serious deep dive into what's going on. Um, yeah, again, it's uh, that's something we, we, we talk about a lot. We've, we've studied a lot. And, you know, is there is there any key things that are attributing to uh, injuries on the field? There, is there things that we're doing with the players? I mean, we, we do more work in the weight room with our players than than most uh, most teams. So that will be something that we're we're obviously going to evaluate as well as, you know, our practice schedule, our workout schedule. Um, you know, we've got this great facility with a great gym. Are we doing too much? Is that, you know, is that helping, um, or is that hindering us more than it's helping us? I think you know, a fresh set of eyes and and uh, a new coaching staff on how they do things um, is something that we'll consider. Um, but again, it's a it's a wide range of injuries. You know, I, I don't. Um, you know, Roland Milligan uh, just getting landed on when he was uh, playing in a game and has a rare uh, toe injury that's not something that we could have changed. Um, Braden Lenius just landing on his foot wrong. Um, a lot of the injuries are, are different and they're not something that was preventable by something that we did. So um, I think sometimes it just comes down to a little bit of luck, but I think um, we'll definitely look at it to see if there's anything we're doing wrong. What does it mean to you personally to, to be back and have the confidence from Craig and the people above you to continue on here? Uh, it means, means a lot. You know, you, I've, I've uh, you know, been with this team for a long time. Um, definitely didn't like the thoughts of, of leaving in the situation that we're in right now. Um, and, you know, just the, the confidence that, that they're showing in me uh, as a general manager means, means a ton. I mean, that's all you can ask for is, uh, in, in any job is to have some support from your leadership and uh, the fact that they, they believe in me and, and believe that we can, that I'm uh, going to be a, a part of, of turning this around uh, means the world to me. You know, so it's, um, you know, something that I, I don't take for granted um, and, uh, you know, motivates me. I think uh, with me personally, when we have seasons like this, um, you know that that's what bothers me more than anything is is how it affects the people around me, um, not not just my own family, but the the people that work in our building. I think that the the Rough Riders organization is is um, is a great organization, and I think that our our business office and our you know our our social media, all of our our ticketing, I think they're they just do an awesome job and. We're, we're not holding our end of the bargain right now. And so I think that, um, you know, when we do get there, um, that, that our team is just is, is one of the best in the league. And, and um, so I feel the obligation there to, uh, to do a good job for uh, the people that believe in me. Do you think the turning point of the season, the turning point of the season, of course, it was that Labor Day rematch in Winnipeg? Yeah, um, that was, you know, if you look back now, it's easy, to, it's easy to say now, but that was, you know, that was a, that was a, a, a tough game. You know, I, I don't know if I've seen a game like that where it felt like, um, you know, we weren't even out on the field, to be honest with you. And it was a situation where um, just surprising when you come off the momentum of winning a, um, an emotional Labor Day game and, and um, 
and then you go there and, and, and it felt like we didn't, we didn't compete. And so, um, that was the beginning of, of us losing the games. I thought there was times where, um, we were going to bounce out of it. I thought early in the Ottawa game, I was, you know, like, here we, here we go. We're, we're going to get back on track. And, you know, there was times where our offense looked like they could move the ball very fast, you know, and we, we, we could score, uh, very quickly. We just weren't consistent enough, you know, and, um, you know, a little bit of that is is being able to adjust. You know, like other teams would adjust to us, and if they wanted to take one aspect of our game, we, we have to be able to adjust in the game and, and change the game plan on what the, how they're attacking us. And I felt like um, we were being attacked more than we were attacking. So. What did you see this year to indicate that a coaching change was needed to take the next step forward with this team? You know, it really just comes down to pretty much what probably everyone um, – everyone else sees is, um, you know, when you get on a, a skid and you, you can't get out of it. I mean, um, the good teams are, they, they don't lose more than a couple games in a row and the great teams don't le lose more than a game in a row. Um, and so you when you get on that skid and you can't get out of that. Um, it feels like you're, you know, you're running in place and it's just frustrating um, and not, not due to, you know, it wasn't the effort of the coaches or the effort of the player. It's just the players that just, we weren't able to pull out of it. And, um, you know, I, I just thought that it's important to change who's given the message and and um, and change the direction. What are you looking for in the next head coach? What qualities are you searching for? Well, yeah, there, there's um, you know, like <laughs> I think um, you know it's early in the process, but when I when I look at it, you know, there's going to be questions on whether you want a head coach that has a strength to one side of the ball, or um, we've had Craig that's a, a special teams coordinator by trade. Um, when you look at the rest of the league and, um, you know, I do evaluations on teams that have had the most success. Do they have um, a head coach on one side of the ball or um, what's a little more challenging is, you know, I, I, I wish that we were strong on one side of the ball and, you know, and then it would become a little bit more clear. But to be honest, we we weren't very successful on e either side of the ball. You know, if you look at the, the, the spread between uh, points scored on offense and defense, it's, it's not something that, that I'm proud of. And, and so, um, you know, that will be part of the process. But, um, you know, as, as I said before, uh, someone that's a, a leader of, of men and that can understand the room, I think part of the, part of the, uh, the, uh, this, you know, the, the part of a good head coach is be able to understand the players and what they're going through and be able to feel what they're going through. Um, and, and that means a lot to the players and the players have to want to win for the head coach. Um, and when you, when you have that where the, the coaches care, and I'm not saying they didn't care about Coach Dickinson because they did, but um, they play harder and, and, uh, and, it, and it means for them. But, you know, even, um, you know, a coach that's able to see the big picture of uh, and, um, you know, coach the coaches as well. Um, someone that's, um, you know, going to have his, um, his, uh, you know, he's, he's not only going to coach players, but he's going to coach the coaches and, and put a good coach and staff together. And, and, uh, you know, it's a, with the head coach, it's not just about the head coach. It's also about his staff. So I'm, I would be looking forward to them having a, a strong staff, um, that we, we can win with. Jeremy, what was it like to have that conversation with Craig this morning? Uh, it wasn't, wasn't fun, uh, Rob, to be honest with you. Um, he handled it probably better than I did, to be honest with you. Um, you know, uh, you know, Craig's been in football a long time, so he's a smart man. And, um, you know, I, I, I think that he knew that the conversation was going to come. And, and it's not always the funnest to be the person that gives, gives that message. Uh, but he, he was just like you expect from Coach Dickinson. He was great. And, I felt like at times he was pumping me up more than I was having to pump pump him up uh, from the conversation. But um, you know, I think he he fully understands the expectations of of the organization, and uh, he understands that you know we we didn't get it come anywhere close to to doing what we we wanted to do.